are detrital sedimentary rocks and how do they form? So in the last video, we looked at the rock cycle and how igneous rocks are formed and then classified. In this video, we will look at detrital sedimentary rocks. What exactly are they, where do we find them, and how they help us understand the past? Well, detrital sedimentary rocks are actually just broken down bits and pieces of either igneous rocks or metamorphic rocks that are, are transported to certain locations by water, ice, or wind. And at that location, they're, they're hardened or lithified actually is the technical term, into solid rocks. Now, there are two other types of sedimentary rocks that don't quite fit into the rock cycle. These are called chemical and organic sedimentary rocks, and we'll talk about those in another video. Detrital sediments that form detrital sedimentary rocks come from the Earth's crust, which is composed of igneous and metamorphic rocks. When these rocks are exposed to natural elements such as snow and rain and changes in temperature, the crust begins to crack and get crumbly. Eventually, the ground breaks into rocks of all shapes and sizes, and we call this weathering. Now, don't confuse weathering and erosion. Weathering is the breaking down of the rock in place. Erosion refers to the pulling away of these pieces from the parent rock, typically by water. These pieces are then transported to other locations in a stream or a river where they will eventually become sedimentary rock. Now, importantly, these broken down pieces of crust are actually called clasts, and each clast size gets its own name. So if the clast is bigger than about a bowling ball, then we call it a boulder. If the clast is smaller than a bowling ball, but bigger than about the size of a golf ball, it's called a cobble. It's called a pebble when the clast is smaller than a golf ball, but bigger than a pinhead. And after this, the rock sizes get really, really tiny. From the size of a pinhead down to the diameter of a human hair, and we call it sand. And silt is what we call the tiny, tiny particles when we can no longer see them with the naked eye, and that's when we need a magnifying glass. The tiniest uh, particle is called clay, and it's so small that if you chew on it, it doesn't feel gritty in your teeth. Once these different sediment particles or class get moved to other locations, they all get sort of squished down in a process called compaction and then they harden or lithify into solid rock. And that's when they are known as sedimentary rocks. Classifying sedimentary rocks is closely associated with the sizes of the individual class that make up that rock. Anything greater than the sand side class right up to boulders, and it's called a conglomerate or a breccia. Uh, this entire canyon wall is called a conglomerate because although it does have some fine clay class, it is mostly made up of sand-sized to boulder-sized class. Notice the person for scale. Now, don't be fooled though. This is a conglomerate. Why? Well, when you look at the class inside the rock, you'll see that most of them are bigger than a pinhead. And remember, if you have a lot of class in the rock that are bigger than a pinhead, which is a sand-sized class, then we call it a conglomerate, even though there are no big boulders in there. Anything greater than a silt-sized class, so that's about the diameter of one of your hairs, right up to and including a sand-sized class, which is about the size of a pinhead, and it's called a sandstone. This is a sandstone. Notice that all the little clasts in there, they're all sort of kind of the same, and this makes sandstones easy to identify when we're out rock hunting. Now, things get really tricky when clasts are tinier than a piece of silt, and are called siltstones, shales, and mudstones, depending on the class size and the way that the particles are sorted. For now, we're just going to lump them all together and call them mudstones, and we'll break them apart and describe them in more detail in a future video. Did you know that geologists are like CSI detectives? But instead of fingerprints and other kinds of forensic evidence, geologists use sedimentary rocks to help them piece together the past. 
conglomerates, for example, are often deposited in the riverbed at the source of a mountain stream. And that's because the stream's energy, it decreases over greater distances, and so it isn't able to push the larger clusts farther downstream. Sandstones, on the other hand, are often deposited in stream beds much farther downstream or at the mouth of rivers as they meet the ocean in things called deltas. Uh, mudstones typically, but not always, get deposited in mudflats near the ocean because the water is calm and allows the tiny clay class time to settle to the bottom. So, when geologists find these different kinds of sedimentary rocks, they can often piece together the ancient environment and that's like so cool. Okay, here's our creation fact for the week. Did you know that it doesn't take millions of years to get fixed sequences of sedimentary rocks? Hundreds of feet thick of conglomerates and sandstones and mudstones, for example, were deposited in just a few weeks when two large lakes burst their banks just a few thousands of years ago. It all depends what you think of the past. Thinking biblically, creation geologists allow for great geologic upheavals, not just the flood, that could, given enough water, deposit vast sequences of sedimentary rocks in short periods of time. Finally, uh, let's always remember Hebrews 11.6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. God requires faith and humility because we will simply never have all the answers. That's important because if we did have all the answers, we might be more concerned with winning arguments, and that's pride, rather than winning people to Jesus Christ. Well, that's all for now with me, Dr. C, on Creation Geology for Beginners. Please don't forget to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button uh, so that you have easier access to future videos. Thank you very much and goodbye.